Hello and welcome to Nationwide Today. I'm Elizabeth Omori. Farmlands, properties and critical national infrastructure were on Saturday destroyed by flood in villages along the Kuali Abaji Lokoja Highway after a heavy downpour. Ilyasu Onoto Yakubo reports that no life was lost. Victims say the flood water ran through the various communities for more than four hours, uprooting boulders and plants on its path. In the aftermath, farmers helplessly watch the level of destruction of their produce following the over four hour ravaging threats of the flood. Ado Bega is one of the numerous farm victims who narrated that every produce of the Fadama investors on the path of the flood, which stretched through about 15 kilometers, were washed away with nothing left. People have already planned, finished, nobody in this area, almost about 15 kilometers, if I not made a mistake, they are planned. And the water has already washed everything. Nothing, nothing remains there. Both banana and the everything, all is. The disaster has affected us. We would be glad if government can help us. Scores of households have been rendered homeless with buildings leveled to the ground. Members of the households struggle to salvage what is left of their personal effects from the rubbles of their buildings. About 15 hectares of farmland were destroyed. More than 30 houses were destroyed as well. People, you can see them, they are homeless now. They are calling on the of the government to come and assist the farmers and these people who lose their houses and properties. I am hopeful that Allah will assist me to rebuild again. Critical infrastructure such as this newly constructed bridge and high tension poles are amongst national assets giving way as the flood digs through the earth. Ilyasu Notu Yakubu, NTA News. Into disaster management, Federal Capital Territory Abuja is one of the major flood prone areas in the country that usually get devastated by floods, with many casualties year in, year on. As a result of this incessant hazard, the FCT Emergency Management Agency and the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, have agreed to strengthen collaboration. This agreement was reached when the DG FCT SEMA paid a visit to the DG NEMA in his office. Ilasu Ali Yakobo reports. This collaboration suggested many options and solutions expected to mitigate the high risks of flooding and other associated hazards in the FCT, one of which is the hazard mapping of the FCT and the constitution of the local emergency committee by the FCT SEMA for rapid response in cases of disaster in the area. The two bosses agreed that the growing population of the FCT calls for closer collaboration between stakeholders to safeguard the well-being of the people and the valuable national heritage. The meeting also suggested the establishment of disaster risk management studies in various universities across the country to improve the capacities of stakeholders in the business of disaster management. It has been on record that NEMA in collaboration with FEMA and relevant stakeholders have partnered and provided timely response and the evacuation of affected persons during emergencies in the FCT. The local neighbors are the first responders we live in their own locality. So because of that, we have to think ahead and bring in the local divers. The meeting promised to promote the culture of disaster risk reduction and building of communal resilience in the FCT. In Abuja, Ilyasu Aliakubu, NTA News. Meanwhile, President Mohamed Buhari has reiterated his administration's commitment towards ensuring that no part of the country will suffer neglect or into its geographical location or political inclination. President Buhari made this known in a message at the commissioning and handing over ceremony of the erosion and flood control project in Abia State. Correspondent Ifoma Undu Okoli reports. The erosion and flood control project at Ogudasa in Isukwata local government area of Abia State is one of the 20 ecological intervention projects approved by President Muhammad Buhari for 
the first quarter of 2020 and was designed to address the challenges of soil erosion in the area. Speaking at the commissioning of the project, President Buhari, who was represented by the Deputy Chief Whip, House of Representatives and member representing Isukwato Umunochi Federal Constituency in Kiruka Onyejocha, noted that the successful completion of the project will not only ensure the safety and well-being of the citizens of the surrounding communities, but would also improve their standard of living. The approval of this project is in tandem with the plea of President Muhammad Buhari, which is that no part of the country will suffer neglect owing to its geographical location or political inclination. Permanent Secretary of the Ecological Fund Office, Abuja, who was represented by a director in the Ecological Fund, pointed out that the handing over of the project to the benefiting communities will serve the dual purpose of enabling the communities take over and exercise ownership, as well as ensure its maintenance and sustainability. Some indigenous of the host communities expressed joy over the construction of the project, the erosion control project, will provide an enabling environment for enhanced socio-economic activities among benefiting communities. In Umwahia, Ifoma Ndu Okole, NTA News. The Nazara state government has flagged off the second phase of its flooding and erosion control program with the Lafia Town Stormwater and Gol Erosion Control Project. Achigli Magaji reports that Governor Abdullah Sule, who flagged off the program, also gave approval for similar projects in four local government areas in the state with close cases of flooding. The 1.5 billion naira project is an initiative for a permanent solution to the perennial cases of erosion and flooding in the state. It entails the reduction of vulnerability of the people by channeling more waterways into the Amba River and other tributaries so that more land will be available to the people for socio-economic activities. I'm happy to note that the same project is expected to be carried out in some parts of Doma, Kefi, Nasarawa and to the local government areas very soon, inshallah. At this juncture, let me once again appeal to the good people of Nasarawa State, especially the areas that are prone to flood disaster, to take precautionary measures as well as educate ourselves on proper ways of refuse disposal. Coordinator of the program in the state, Kwak Ha Jonathan, who gave the scope of the project, says it will cover five sites for an initial period. The Emir of Lafia, Justice Sidi Bagi Mohammed IV, expressed gratitude to the government as the project is a big intervention in his domain. The issue of erosion in Lafia, Lafia is one of those places that are really prone to erosion, and some of those places affected are really deadly. Checks of compensation were also presented to those known as the Project Affected Person, PAP. It has a completion period of four months. In Lafia, Atigili Magaji, NTN News. And more than 70% completion has been achieved on the entire second Niger Bridge project of the federal government. Uchena Unwokoyo visited the site for an update. It is fast becoming a reality that another corridor across the river Niger will soon be opened for commuters. The 11.9 kilometers of the entire project, comprising of the main bridge, three secondary bridges and access roads, have reached advanced stages. We have covered the deck of the bridge, about two kilometers out of the 3.2 kilometers of the, the, the deck of the bridge. The three kilometers at the other side in Delta State has substantially be completed. We are already on the binder course on that section. And you can see here now, we are already, this is the Makadam layer of the pavement. Some section where we have uh, passed in, the, uh, in front, we have already laid the binder course. So this section too is at, uh, you know, higher percentage of uh, completion. Work is progressing, uh, the, the bridge is a, uh, on a completion of uh, roughly uh, 80%. We are uh, also on a very advanced level with OS works and with the drainage works. 
and are now within the pavement works. Uh, the contractual delivery is in uh, February, March next year. The federal government of Nigeria has been able to provide the adequate funding for the project. And this is why you see that uh, there's a lot of uh, activity on site. The project has also created more than 2,000 direct jobs and about 4,000 indirect jobs for the host communities. The second Niger bridge, when completed, is expected to decongest traffic on the existing bridge in Onecha. Uche Nawako, NTN News. In two religious matters, authorities in Saudi Arabia have opened doors for additional 2 million pilgrims per month to perform Umrah. A statement by the Minister of Hajj in Umrah said it has been receiving requests from Muslims around the world for permission to come to the Holy Land for the religious activities, having reopened the sites in October for domestic worshippers after it was totally closed as a result of COVID-19 pandemic. The ministry also announced that only vaccinated pilgrims will be permitted beginning from August 9. This will increase the number of pilgrims performing Umrah from 6,000 a month to 2 million visitors. Pilgrims will have to include authorized COVID-19 vaccination certificates along with their Umrah request. However, vaccinated pilgrims from countries that Saudi Arabia includes on its entry ban list, entry ban list will have to be quarantined upon arrival. And you're still watching Nationwide. Time now to join Adiola in Lagos for more reports. Hello, Adiola. Hello, Elizabeth. Good to see you. Maritime stakeholders are exploring every available option towards stimulating the growth of a sector and increase its contribution to the nation's gross domestic product. The Minister of Transportation, Roti Miyamichi, at a retreat in Lagos, is therefore using the successes recorded in the rail subsector as benchmark in revolutionizing the maritime industry. Michael Olaleye reports. The COVID-19 pandemic impacted drastically on world trade and investment. The maritime industry contributed 1.87% to the nation's GDP. This trend is what the minister believes could be better once human resources are well utilized to achieve specific goals. The minister further explained that the deployment of the Deep Blue project already reducing criminality at sea will in turn crash the huge war risk premium accrued to Nigerian vessels. The reason why uh, vessels are not able to go to Port Harcourt, to Wari and other places is because of the high cost of insurance. And the high cost of insurance is as a result of the insecurity. So if we address insecurity, which is the root cause, the high cost of insurance will be reduced from what is the war premium to other things, in which case more business will go to the South, South, where they have other four uh, On the $200 million cabotage versus finance fund, the minister said disbursement is being delayed by the finance ministry after presidential approval has been granted. We still abide by the federal government law with that because we are sending it for the company through a commercial bank because we have to recover the money. The bank have to recover the money. Heads of agencies within the maritime sector believe the retreat will further promote synergy requires to drive transformation. We have cases where um, inspection of goods at the port is done physically because of lack of scanners. And we are encouraging Nigerian Customs Service to procure these pro uh, scanners. We have heard they have been approved by federal government. If we have a clarity in the regulatory environment, that effectively will allow for efficiency in service delivery. The three-day retreat is aimed at achieving the median term plan of the maritime industry between 2021 and 2025. In Lagos, Michael Walale, NT News. The Medical Guild Lagos is appealing to government to rethink its decision to remove medical doctors undertaking housemanship and National Youth Service Corps from its payroll. This was at a media party in Lagos. Lynn Leneke reports. April 2021, the federal government approved the removal of medical house officers, interns, and NYSC doctors from the payroll of the civil service. With an announcement in July, Lagos State became the first to implement the directive at state level. 
Medical experts are, however, concerned about this development and are urging government to reconsider its stand, especially at this time that the country's health system is challenged. Some of these issues are key to the survival of medical practice in Nigeria, and we feel that if we do not tackle this issue now, we'll be doing a great disservice to the medical profession, even to the government and to the good people of Lagos State. They insist that the decision would further worsen brain drain and manpower challenge confronting states and the country in general. Removing them from the scheme of service is also reduce the relativities between the doctors and other health workers in terms of placement in remuneration. Experts are advocating policies that would attract and encourage younger medical practitioners in the country. In Lagos, Lynn Lenake, NTA News. And we are done from Lagos. Meiduguri will be our next stop when we return from this break. Please stay with us. Thanks for staying with the Nigerian Television Authority up to this moment on Nationwide. And this is NTA Meduguri Zonal Network Center. Primary school pupils across 27 local government areas of Borno State are expected to benefit from federal government's national homegrown school feeding program under the Federal Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs. The data capture registration exercise, which has already commenced, is being undertaken by the National Orientation Agency. Yagum Subukar has more details. The National Homegrown School Feeding Program is a government-led school feeding program that aims to improve the health and educational outcomes of public primary school pupils. In Borno State, the program started with 24 local government areas in 2019, but it has been upgraded to all the 27 local government areas with pupils from primaries 1 to 3 as beneficiaries as the biometric data captured by NOA covers all schools targeted. Most of the schools I went in the town, they don't have problem of serving the children. His Excellency directed all the local government chairmen to also assist in uh, distributing this form because some of this local cannot be reached. About 650,000 primary pupils from Borno State are expected to be captured and this exercise is to hold every year considering the shift process among the pupils. Some of the benefiting parents, teachers, cooks and stakeholders in the exercise appreciated federal government for the initiative. The National Homegrown School Feeding Program is targeting 14 million primary school pupils nationwide. In Medjugri, Yagum Subukar, NTA News. Let's talk health. Now, Borno State Government has reiterated commitment to putting up measures on how to collectively promote breastfeeding and providing the best support to mothers while preventing the spread of COVID-19. Commissioner, Ministry of Health, Comrade Juliana Bitrus, disclosed this during a press briefing marking this year's Breastfeeding Week. Pauline Kujivana completes the story. World Breastfeeding is being celebrated from 1st to early to raise awareness about breastfeeding and to encourage women to engage in exclusive breastfeeding within the period of six months from birth for the survival, health and well-being of the children. I will continue to breastfeed her six months. I'm breastfeeding her for now four months, but I will continuously breastfeeding her up to six months without water or any other food. Wife of Bono State Governor Dr. Falma Tababagana Omar Ozulum said, Bono State Government and partners have put firm mechanism to improve breastfeeding rates. I want to use this opportunity to call for greater investment in comprehensive breastfeeding programs, improved breastfeeding counseling and support for women in health facilities and the community. Commissioner Minister of Health, Comrade Juliana Bitrus, and Executive Director, State Primary Health Care Development Agency, Dr. Gwani Abba, stressed the importance of breast milk as it aids in all round development of the child. Partners from UNICEF, WFP, and WHO call for six month maternity leave to enable mothers engage in exclusive breastfeeding to provide the infant with essential nutrients and protect them from infectious diseases. The theme for this year's World Breastfeeding Week is Protect Breastfeeding, a Shared Responsibility. In Medugri, Paul Nkujavana, NTA News. And those are the latest stories on Nationwide from Medugri. Elizabeth in Abuja has the next set of reports for us. Elizabeth? Thank you so much. 
actors in national integration and peace building process say the Nigerian state is too strong to disintegrate while advocating for effective implementation of federal character. This was the thrust of a briefing by the National Planning Committee Citizens Summit for National Integration, Peace and Security. In Abuja, Olusheye Adeagbo reports. The National Planning Committee of the Nigeria Institute of Public Relations, NIPR, drew a submit on Nigeria's integration, peace and security as engaged different sectors of the society. Findings of the committee reveal that Nigeria still prefers staying together to build a better nation. I will reiterate that Nigerians love Nigeria. Nigerians want to have a federal republic of Nigeria that stands tall and strong on the basis of equity, fairness, and justice. Chairman of the committee, that Dr. Ike Niliko, who presented the findings, also highlighted some issues that need to be resolved. Many have asked us, why is it that some feel alienated? And we discovered, contrary to what we thought, that every part of this country feels marginalized in one way or the other. Nigerian Institute of Public Relations and IPR says it's been in partnership with over 39 organizations across the country with committees in place to create pathway for citizens to discuss issues relating to building a better Nigeria. In Abuja, Olushaye Adiagbo, NTA News. Talking politics, the People's Democratic Party's Congress in Mina, the United States Capitol, witnessed large turnout of party faithful and loyalists who defied the heavy downpour to exercise their franchise in a peaceful and orderly manner. Correspondent Musa Mokhail, who monitored the exercise, reports that the incumbent state chairman of the party, Tanko Beji, who, re who was re-elected to run the affairs of the party for the next four years after scoring 2,092 votes to beat his opponent, Hamid Mukhtar, who got two votes. Delegates from across the 25 local government area of the Niger state defied the early morning downpour and converged on MENA, the state capital to elect executive members that would pilot the affairs of the party in the next four years. The party faithful took advantage of the serenity of the environment and filed out in their numbers in a peaceful and orderly manner to cast their ballots shortly after being accredited. University Deputy Governor Benson Abonu, who presided over the Congress, announced the result which extended into the wee hours of Sunday morning. Barista. Tanko, Beji, 